hey guys welcome back or welcome to my channel i hope you guys are having a wonderful day and a wonderful life of course in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys all of my e-readers that i've collected so far and compare them just a tad bit i'm going to keep this as simple as i can and very surface level when it comes to the specs it's kind of redundant to talk about performance on e-readers because it doesn't really matter much and the goal is to just read books and listen to audiobooks which all of these devices do well first on the docket is the kindle paperwhite 11th edition in agave green this was the very first e-reader i unboxed on this channel and the first e-reader to make me fall back in love with reading the kindle paperwhite is the OG of e-readers but it is limited which for some isn't really a problem. No Limited is super fire and half of the books I've read since my purchase has been from the KU library. Also as an Amazon Prime member you can get a $3 credit on certain deliveries that you change for a later delivery date. This definitely adds up if you stay on Amazon but only being on the Kindle ecosystem can have its limitations when you try out other e-readers like the Kobo because you can't send ebooks to other devices or you can't annotate on pages directly unless you have the big boy aka the Kindle scribe but even that has its limitations. You can't download ebooks via a cable, but you can download PDF files or ePubs directly from Amazon or even through your phone. You can even send loan books from your public library if you live in the States, but unfortunately not in Canada for some reason. Battery life is top tier compared to other e-readers, but it has a simple user interface, so I can't really compare the battery life to other e-readers because those run on Android and can do a lot more. Also, Kindles have a brighter screen and the warm light feature is really warm compared to others. This one isn't technically mine, even though I did buy it, but I gifted it to my little sister. This one is the Kindle Kids 2022 version. It's basically a regular Kindle, but Amazon just wanted to capitalize per usual and just slap the kids label on it. My sister has been obsessed with decorating her Kindle, so this is how she ended up decorating it. This one reminds me of my 2018 version, but with an upgraded battery for sure. This is basically a smaller form factor of the paper white, minus the warm feature and the battery life since the paper white is superior. If you're looking for a good Kindle deal, I'd wait when this one goes on sale because you can get this for $60 to $70. A tip if you're thinking of getting this for your child is especially more than one, make sure to buy it under your Amazon account so when you add a child profile under your account, you can share books that you bought. So that way you don't have to buy another copy. Now this was my first time trying out an e-reader from Onyx Books. This one is called the Books Page. It's basically a copy and paste of the Kindle Oasis without the grip in the back. Books and readers run on Android so the possibilities are sort of endless. The Play Store is already pre-installed so you can easily download all of your favorite reading apps whether that's for novels, audiobooks, or manga and manhwa. You can also use the browser where you can download ePubs, PDF files, etc etc directly from the books page this one is decently priced but i do feel like the brightness could be a little bit better youtube works fine on this but crunchyroll doesn't it doesn't mean a lot and a lot of us don't use these devices to watch things but we circle back to that later in the video a pro about this device is that you can listen to audiobooks without headphones which also allows you to save your battery life this e-reader and others i'll be showing y'all later actually have really great battery lives the kindle paperwhite can last me a week and a half when i'm reading heavily and the other ones kind of follow after so here is my top two but she's not two e-reader the books palma this one kind of went viral on tiktok and ig for me a while back i got a couple of comments on it looking laggy but i had to let them know that this is an e-reader with an e-ink display it's not going to have 120 hertz display let alone 60 hertz e-readers typically run on one hertz and it's supposed to protect our eyes for when we want to spend hours reading and not worry about eye strain the palma shares the same features as the books page of course but this one comes with flash camera a customizable button that i love to use to refresh my screen also the brightness can defo get bright compared to the page and the audio also sounds better than the page as well. I remember seeing phone size e-readers from other companies when I, when I was strictly using my Kindle and thought that could never be me, but I'm officially part of the teeny weeny e-reader club. I absolutely love reading this in bed, which that's where I mainly read by the way. It's super economic for me with and without a pop socket. There are times when I crave to read on a bigger screen, but it's been really hard going back. This one only comes in black and white and they include a case with each purchase, which I wish a lot more companies did. I think what would make the Palmo even more perfect for me is if it was in color. I know a lot of people also want to be able to add a sim card to this but personally i don't really care about all of that the big me b75 1c was gifted to me recently and i'm still loving it this one comes in color and big me included a stylus pen in a case just like the books page in palma it runs on android and is capable of doing the same things minus the camera and and flash that the palma has if you're looking into annotating but you only read digitally this one may be for you yes kobo just released the libra color and amazon will release their color kindles this year or the next but those are limited and it doesn't include the place 
store. Reading manga and manhwa is a vibe with this device. I know a lot of us read on our phones or tablets and even with the comfort feature on, it still strains our eyes. So this is a better alternative. But do keep in mind that this isn't left hand friendly and the only other downside I can think of is the lack of case and the pen not being magnetic. Big Me does have other e-readers that can magnetically attach to the device, but those go for more. As I mentioned earlier, watching anime on Crunchyroll wasn't working on the books page, but it does with this one. Again, I don't use its devices other than reading, but it's always cool to know how far e-readers have come. If y'all have noticed, the last three devices have their own personal e-ink center, which allows us to change settings for a better reading experience depending on what we're reading. An honorable mention is the Kindle Fire 7. I don't really use this anymore because it has become a bit slower and now I have a color e-reader. I had to download an APK file to get the Play Store on this device, so that's why I'm able to use the Shonen Jump app and Webtoon. If these e-ink e-readers aren't in your price range and you still want color, I suggest an Android tablet that has the play store pre-installed what's really annoying by amazon is that they have the unmitigated goal to try to charge us 20 dollars to remove ads that shouldn't already be on the devices so now i'm just going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons i really love each and every device and they each serve their own purpose i want to exaggerate that i'm not here to recommend a specific e-reader that's up to y'all to decide which one will fit your budget and which one will fit your lifestyle more all of these are pretty lightweight with the exception of the b751c when it has a case on i recommend using a magsafe sticker on some of these devices if you don't want your e-reader to be too bulky. When you just want to lay it down on a table or prop it up on a stand, you can just detach the pop socket. The Books Bomber is the lightest with a books page falling right after. I really hope Big Me and Books can start selling clear cases for those of us that like to customize our devices because it can be hard to find a decent case for the B751C and the books page for those of us that aren't a big fan of folio cases. So, are any of y'all thinking of getting any of these e-readers or all y'all fine with the ones you already have? Or are y'all waiting to get your hands on the new Kobo and Kindle e-readers? Let me know down in the comments. Before y'all go, I promise my IG fam that I add some book recs that I enjoyed reading at the end of last year and this year. So let's start off with fantasy. First on the docket is Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Now that one is the first book. There are five currently going on right now and Sarah J Mass is currently working on the sixth one. My favorite one is the second book and the fifth book. The first one kind of serves kind of like canon, but it is important for for the rest of the story there's a lot of world building fighting romance betrayal friendship and so much more the next book i recommend is once upon a broken heart this one is also a series as well three books currently this is from stephanie garber she typically writes for the ya audience so i do recommend if you have a child or a sibling that that's 13 and up because my brother is obsessed with it as well for this one i'm just going to read a summary for y'all for as long as she can remember evangeline fox has believed in true love and happy endings until she learns that the love of her life will marry another. Desperate to stop the wedding and to heal her wounded heart, Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. But she later learns that bargaining with an immoral is a dangerous game and that the Prince of Hearts wants far more from her than she'd pledge. He has plans for Evangeline, plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite strategy. Now this next one is The Bride of the Shadow King. So it currently has three books right now. The first book is a slow burn romance about a shun human princess and a shadow king that are immediately attracted to each other but because of politics and her father wanting to marry off one of her younger sisters. There's a lot of mystery, secrets, and deceptions in this world and it's a dual POV which, which kind of became an issue for myself in the last book. The next one is the Folk of the Air series with the first book being The Cruel Prince. This one's basically about a human trying to adapt in the high court of fairy and just all of her struggles that she has to deal with with other students or just other fairies just like picking at her. And there's just a lot of like drama, a lot of betrayal, bloodshed, and a lot of trickery when it comes to these folks. It was honestly a slow read for me but I decided to go on audible and listen to it rather than read it because it was honestly a really great experience listening to it rather than reading it for me and this is coming from someone that doesn't typically like to consume their books through audio now the last one on my fantasy list is the mead mishap series with the first book being the time I got drunk and saved the demon this was actually my first time reading a book from a black author which was an experience of its own and I've been really wanting to read more from black authors this book is from Kimberly Lemming and again this is the Mead Mishap series. There's three currently going on right now. The second one being the time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf and that time I got drunk and saved a human. Now I will say I didn't enjoy the first one as much as the other ones because I just had to get used to her style of writing but this whole series is going to be one that I will revisit in the future again because it's honestly just a fun fantasy and it has a lot of witty banter and a lot of comedic relief. So these next two 
are like basically marriage and convenience which is the first being the winter series by katarina maura and i would recommend reading bittersweet memories from her too because her story is really sweet and they're mentioned several times in each book with katarina maura her books can kind of be a hit and miss there are some books in the series i prefer than others but i think the series is the best one out of all of them personally this next book is very popular on book talk booktube and bookstagram but just in case you don't know this one is called the dreamland billionaire series and it's by lauren asher and her books are actually really good even though her catalog isn't the biggest but she's actually one of my favorite authors now the other books have a lot of enemies to lovers type of dynamic but these are specifically enemies to lovers opposite of tracks type of book first one is called king of sin series by anna huang y'all probably have heard of the twisted series which was really good so if you like that series this one won't disappoint the next one is the off campus series now i only read two of the books and half of the third book because it's just really hard for me to get into like when kids are involved or an accidental pregnancy because honestly truly i tune out immediately but i'm currently trying to finish it on audible because i really do like the characters themselves this one is based in college with hockey players so this was my very first series getting into like the whole hockey college sphere now the last one here is dark romance now i only really recommend one currently because i don't read a lot of dark romance and it's definitely not for the faint of heart this one's called legacy of god series from rena kent i did go ahead and read each book of the parents called royal elites afterwards and you can read it beforehand because each of the legacy of god series books have the parents in there you know socializing with their, with their kids and whatnot and they also have their own pov at the end of the book but the royal elite series was a bit too dark for me compared to the legacy of god series just like the other books please make sure to read the trigger warnings before getting into dark romances because baby mm -mm. so yeah that's gonna be all thank you guys so much for watching this cozy ish comparison video with me i hope you guys also have enjoyed the book rex that i mentioned at the end of this video please stay safe and take care of yourselves see you on the next one deuces Thank you.